What's up, everybody? So are you ready to unlock the real estate secrets that the pros are hoping that you don't find out about? Well, tonight, I'm going to give you the game on how you can buy investment properties with no money down and no credit checks by becoming the bank, all right? Using a strategy called subject to the existing financing and then creative financing. It puts you in control where we don't have to go fill out credit applications with a bank and qualify for debt, use realtors, any of that stuff. Now you should know that you can do this in all 50 states and you don't need any certifications, all right? So my name is Gene Boykin and I'm the founder of the Go-Getter Family Real Estate Investing Academy. Tonight, I'm answering some questions uh, from my 700,000 followers that I have spread out across my uh, um, social media platforms. I'm taking questions straight out of the comments and straight out of my many DMs that, that I get from all of you. So thank you for sending those DMs. feel like I should show you guys some love and answer some of these questions. So I want you to hit that like button. And if you're new to my channel and you feel like I bring you some value, I want you to consider subscribing or you could just be a player about it, man. Hit that subscribe button. Let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm a go getter. They some go getters. We, we, we some go getters. Hope you a go getter. Let's get it. I'm, I'm, I'm a go getter. They some go getters. We, we, we some go getters. Hope you a go getter. Let's get it. I'm a go getter. Hustle to the end. We some no quitters. Knock it out the park. We for show hitters. Right, left hemisphere. That's a don't split us. Yeah. We control our own destiny. Make moves. Cultivate whole legacy. Create a finance. Bring more ecstasy. The right ingredients. Now that's a dope recipe. Okay, what's good, y'all? So tonight, I'm going to be answering uh, some questions from my followers, my social media followers from TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram, all right? So I've got um, uh, around 700,000 followers I was made aware of today. I thought I was at a little over 600,000, but we're growing. So I figured, why not answer some of these many, some of the many questions that I get in my Instagram DMs, comments, Facebook DMs, comments, and TikTok DMs and comments. Now, I want you guys to know that if I could answer every one of your guys' comments and DMs, I absolutely would. But I'm only one man, okay? I try, though. I try. But you guys having questions is a good thing. Absolutely a valid thing because, one, this is the right way to do real estate, okay? You can, you, you can become the bank. It gives you back control of your financial freedom and your ability to control your time, control what your bank account looks like, and control what you create in life. And the best part about all of it is, is not only are we helping our sellers, right, that need to sell these homes, but we're also helping our buyers, okay, because we're providing them with affordable home ownership. So I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight. Hit that like button. Um, Get us in the YouTube algorithm, all right? We got to get this knowledge out to the people. This is where the long-form video is at. This is where you guys are getting the game, okay? So, just real quick, I just got back from Atlanta, okay? I was down in Atlanta, Atlanta for four days. And, you know, I do what I do, um, and I took the risk that I, that I took, man, because if I failed at this, by betting on myself 100% and diving into real estate investing, if I failed, it would have been absolutely catastrophic for me and for my family. And I had a two-year-old daughter when I started doing this. She, re she just turned four uh, not too long ago. So it's really been less than two years that I got my first house doing this subject too. So I fly down to Atlanta and I flew down there first class, flew down there and back first class. And I'm not saying that, I oh, I flew first class. Oh, I got money. I'm a, no. That's not why I'm saying that. That's not why I'm telling you guys that one. I'm telling you guys that because it's how that's how you can change your life. Literally, both on the way there and on the way back, I flew. I was in seat 1A, window seat, by the way, in first class, the very first seat. I'm up there looking how I look now, and I like to fly comfortable. So I was wearing my sweats and all that, my hat backwards and everything, chilling up there with the with the rich folks. <laughs> but uh, we go, I go down to Atlanta and I was down there for some business, for some learning, uh, continually learning. And I also had a private dinner with my Georgia area students. Shonda flew down there from Delaware just to come to dinner. Now she did kick it a little bit while she was down there, but she came to dinner. So she had to make a, you know, a little time of it. So that's what's up. And then, um, 
I had a student fly all the way in from Houston to have that dinner in Atlanta. And one of our inner circle students was gracious enough. Ivy, she was gracious enough to host us at her home to have dinner, man. So we catered it in. It was dope. It was awesome, man. And we had some high level conversations. Um, and we had some constructive conversations. We have to be honest with ourselves, right? We have to be honest from ourselves. Okay, okay. Out of uh uh out of Buffalo, New York. Oh, I'll answer your question too, Jim. Uh, a little bit in a little bit, all right. Um, but we have to be honest with ourselves. Okay, there goes Ileana. What's up, CJ Pips? What's good? So we want to be honest with ourselves, guys. And, and, and we have to take 110% accountability for our circumstances. It is no one else's fault. No one. If we are at an age where we can make our decisions, it doesn't matter if it's somebody else's really, if, if it's their fault, well, guess what? It's our fault for letting a person get close enough to us to make a decision or, or, or not make a decision. And it affects us. So by us taking 110% accountability, guess what? We can make those adjustments. That's what it's about. We got to be able to take constructive criticism and take full accountability. And then we make those adjustments. And when we make those adjustments, it was Jack Welch, who was a billionaire, who said they, it's two millimeter adjustments that make the biggest difference in your financial life, your financial health and well-being. But see, we've also got to understand that how we do anything is how we do everything. I don't know if y'all heard me. I said how we do anything is how we do everything. Bottom line. So, hey, if you want to be successful, Jim Rohn said it himself. His mentor told him the first thing that you need to change is yourself. And then your success will change. Your bank account will change. Your life will change when you change yourself. So let's go, y'all, because we're here to do it. And we're here to give you the game, the financial game to to really to be do what you want, to live how you want, to have a choice in the matter, man. Finally. So let's dive on in because I've been going hard all day. So. Mm. OK. Jazzy Levine from Facebook says, what if you don't have the money to pay the back taxes? Great question, Jazzy. I like the name, too. <laughs> if it's your real name, I don't know. We're using Facebook handles and all that. So anyway, what do you do if you don't have the money to pay the back taxes? That's a great question, because I always call this no money real estate investing. Right. You can do this with no money down, no money out of your own pocket, and then no credit checks. So we've got to get creative. We have got to get creative. There are several things that you can do. So I'm, an, I'm assuming here that you are targeting uh, delinquent tax situations or people who are behind on their taxes. So that would mean they have a lot of equity, right? And equity is profit. There's no loan on that. Like that's theirs. That's the value that their home has went up um, since they owned it. And then they paid down their loan, the equity. That's our profit, man. We, we love equity. Um, so what you do is this. Here's one thing that you can do. If you can't, if you don't have the money to pay the back taxes yourself, you make sure that when you get it under contract, you have enough time between the day you get it under contract to the day of the tax auction. If there is an auction coming up that you can market that property, you can advertise it because once you get it under contract, you can advertise it legally because you have a financial interest in that property now, because we got to understand that that commerce, everything that we do is based on contracts. So when we have the right contracts, guess what that does for us? It gives us power. So we market that property and we get a down payment big enough for that property to pay those back taxes. Now, let's just say for a second, Jazzy, that uh, that the property needs some work and it's going to be really pretty hard to find somebody who's willing to move in and give you a down payment that's big enough to pay the back taxes. Here's what you do then. You find somebody to partner with that will pay those back taxes and do the work. And you give them 50% of the deal because guess what you did? You got the acquisition of the property. So they didn't have to come up with the money or qualify for the debt to get the money to acquire the property and then do the, do the repairs and pay to do the repairs and all that. You already acquired it. Voila, you're in it for no money then. Boom. And you split the profit. I mean, 50% of a grape is, is more than 100% of, of a, that watermelon that you didn't get, right? 
boom so hope that one helped i hope that one helped y'all don't forget hit that like button drop some flames in the comments for your boy i see we got some we got some people with us tonight contessa's in the building she flew in from houston what's up contessa all right we ready to go hard around here we ready to go hard carlos what's good man okay so let me get to the uh let me get to the next question here so question number two where can we find where can we find sellers that are willing to sell their mortgage over to us do we look into foreclosure houses and that is from elvia naranjo <laughs> facebook i hope i said that right i've been working on rolling my r's i promise i know it don't sound like it but i have so Every time I tell people, um, you know, about subject to and creative financing and about buying houses by taking over the existing mortgage, here are their first two questions. Who in the world is going to let me take over their mortgage and keep that mortgage in their name? And then where do I find them? <laughs> Those are valid questions, really. They are because that was the first thought I had too. Like, who's going to let me do that? And then where would I find these houses? Because the the thing that's been imprinted and really implanted into our brain is that the only way to do real estate is the traditional way. And if we want to get into real estate investing, the first first place we need to look is 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 on Zillow or call a realtor and see what they have for sale. Well, we're going about it wrong. We're going about it all wrong. First off, we've got to understand. Uh, uh, um, Elvia, that we don't buy houses. We buy problems. We buy problems. So we need to target a problem. And then once we target the problem and we can target that problem by pulling lists, that's active lead generation. And then we can target problems by how we do our marketing and what our, our business character is in the marketplace. It will attract sellers who have problems because that's our currency is being able to solve a real estate problem. And by knowing these, these tactics and these strategies, you will literally be a wizard in your market. Okay, so remember that we don't buy houses, we buy problems. So if you, you want to buy, you want to look at off market deals. So yes, we can look at foreclosures. Okay, but that's what that's typically what people think is go after foreclosures. But there are so many other problems. So many other problems. You've got absentee landlords, absentee and out of state landlords. Maybe they inherited a house, man, from their long lost uncle, right? They live in Florida. The house is in Michigan. Well, guess what? They got stuff they doing in Florida. So they don't, they're not going to want to come all the way up to Michigan and, 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 you know, do the repairs and sell the house and all of that stuff. Right. So you see where my energy is with this. Y'all see where my energy is going, right? We can, we can look at the divorce list, right? People that are getting divorced. Well, somebody's keeping the house and somebody's leaving, but that person that's leaving is leaving with an income. That person that's staying, guess what they're doing? They're staying with the bills. So now they've got a financial hardship, right? Right. How many of y'all are feeling that vibe? Y'all feeling the vibe that I'm putting out there? Tired landlords. We get the eviction notices list. Code violations. They've gotten uh, violations from the city. Now that's different. You're not going to go to your courthouse for code violations. You're going to go to your city hall, right? Y'all see where I'm going with this? Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? We buy problems. We don't buy houses. All right. So that's where you're going to look. You're going to look at off market deals. All right, Elvia. I hope that helped. Um, and these people, they will let us take over their mortgage or if they don't have a mortgage, guess what? Then they'll be our bank and we can give them payments. It's almost like getting a house on layaway. You feel me? It's almost like buying a house uh, uh, um, or it's almost like buying furniture from the furniture store. Have you have you guys ever went to a furniture store where they're offering you 18 months, a uh, zero uh, percent interest, no payments for the first 18 months, first 12 months, first six months? Guess what? We can buy a house like that. Now, do you think that furniture store is just going to do that because they're dumb because they want to go out of business? No, there's value in that. So we can buy a house that way and we're able to offer a higher price. See, you'll pay a higher price for a set of furniture that you don't have to pay, make any payments on for six months or pay any interest. So can we with a house. So we've just got to think creatively, Elvia. That's it. All right. Out of Facebook. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. So hit that like button, y'all. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them in your, uh, there goes Shonda. There goes Shonda. Shonda was looking good at the dinner, boy. She had that green dress with the nails did up. Shonda funny as hell, too. Shonda, you be killing me. Oh, my goodness. That was a good time, though. That was a good time. There go my dog, Rocco, right there. What up, man? 
Okay. So let me get to the third question here. Let me see. Third question is, what does that mean? That my home was fraudulently for or fraudulent foreclosed on me, says Cinerelli Instagram. Okay. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of questions about this lately because I put up, I was foolish enough to put up a post about a quiet title action that I'm doing. So now everybody's like, what? They're not supposed to be foreclosing on us and we can get the house for free? Yes. Then I messed around and told my inner circle students about it. Now everybody want to do quiet title actions. So we're going to have to teach a, a, a separate class for quiet title actions because it is intensive. But let me get to the crux of this question here so I can answer it. So, guys, if you're new to my channel, you feel like I'm bringing you some value, I want you to consider subscribing. All right. And don't forget to hit that like button. And for those of you that are just popping in, my name's Gene Boykin. All right. I've been called the king of creative finance, uh, the king of subject to the king of no money down buying. But what I am is the founder of the go getter family real estate investing academy and we're here to revolutionize the way that real estate is done in these united states of america so you either gonna get you either gonna get down or you're gonna lay down but we're coming so had to get that out the way now what we've got to understand guys is uh it is industry standard practice for lenders for banks to do what they're not supposed to do. I mean, why do you guys think why do you guys think that we have crashes and and recessions and bank runs and all that crap, man? Because they're doing stuff that they're not supposed to be doing. Well, we've caught them with their hand in the cookie jar. So I'm going to make try to make this as simple as I possibly can because this is a high level advanced strategy. So you do need to have knowledge and and, and tactical information and the right paperwork to be able to do this. But when you buy a house, okay? Matter of fact, I want you guys to think about this because most people uh, took out college loans, student loans. And when we took out, because I did too, and I remember taking out the loan and I had to sign a promissory note. And I'm like, well, promissory note, what is this? I get a check. <laughs> it was, it was, I'll sign a thing in blood. What's up? You know, well, we sign a promissory note. Well, we do the same thing when we buy a house. We buy, a, we, we sign a promissory note. And then we also, the, the, the loan, they call it securitization. It is securitized with a mortgage. That mortgage security is put on public record as a lien against the property. And all that means is that that mortgage has to be paid off for you to get a marketable, a clean and marketable title deed, right? So that's public record. That mortgage is just putting the public on notice that this money is owed for a clean and marketable title. Now, the promissory note, however, is a private document, but it says that we owe money on particular terms, a particular amount to be paid off in a particular amount of time. Now, the Supreme Court has decided that the promissory note and the mortgage security should never be separated from each other. Those two documents, they should always be together. They lawfully, they have to be together. So what the banks do is once you sign a bunch of documents, one of those documents that you sign is a power of attorney. And you're signing a power of attorney for that debt. And you sign that so that the bank can take that promissory note and that mortgage security and sell it on the secondary market to each other on the stock market. That's what mortgage securities, that's what that is. If you ever hear that in the news and like the 2008 uh, real estate crash, you know, the mortgage securities, that's what it is. Well, what the banks and what Wall Street has decided, because they never get caught, is that they're going to separate the note and they're going to sell that separately. And then they're going to they're going to take the mortgage security and they're going to sell that separately because they can double up and ain't nobody going to catch them. So why not? Why not double up? They're like, man, ain't nobody going to catch us. I'm not keeping this promissory note with this mortgage security. Well, we know the rules to the game. So you can look at certain things that are on public record with your mortgage, with your prospect or your client's mortgage and some other information. And we can tell right away if they have done something that they're not supposed to, because it's a long story, but that promissory note has already been paid off. So we're paying a mortgage that we don't even really have to pay. You do have to go through some litigation in order to get this done. But if you have the right tactics and the right paperwork, well, then you're good to go. So 
they that that note, that promissory note, it ends up getting lost in the shuffle, in the shell game that they play. And they can't produce that promissory note. Well, that is a requirement. They have to produce that promissory note upon request. And they also have to produce that promissory note once you pay off that debt because you need that promissory note to cancel it out. So that way it's not floating around out there on the secondary market. And then somebody pops up out of nowhere saying you owe them money when you've already paid off your mortgage. So since they can't produce that promissory note, we can get that house for free. And if they can't produce that promissory note, they do not have a legal right to foreclose on you. Now, I must say this. This is for educational purposes only. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an accountant. OK, so you should check with a state licensed professional. <laughs> but I will say this. Most of them don't know what the hell we talking about. And they should. It's a travesty. What I am is a go getter. I can just tell you about what I do and what my what the go getter family does. So that's what we do. And we we're, we're having a lot of success with that. We've got a lot going on with that right now. Actually, I'm in a quiet title action. So that was a great question. Now, let me see what we got here. Let me see who up in here with me. Okay. Look at I. I want to get down with the get down. <laughs> <laughs> Ike, what's up, man? Ike, I gotta have you come through and uh, I gotta have you come through and do a do a, a workshop, man, on uh, on on disc uh, um and behavioral analysis for my for the members, man. They definitely want to see that. So, Ike's my dog, man. He's he's part of the round table. Ike, you have to fly down to Houston. You know that's your home state. You have to fly down to Houston when we have the live event again, man. For sure, for sure. That's my dog. Some of y'all know Ike, man. Ike's the man. Okay, guys, so let's get to question. Let me see what question I was on. Question number question number four. I have some questions about wholesale. Do you know anything about that? Uh, Trezor and Bunda and Boomba Instagram. Okay. Yes, I know some stuff about wholesale. First off, they're calling it flipping contracts now. So when you hear that on Instagram and social media and Facebook and all, yeah, I just flipped the contract and I made 20000 That They're talking about wholesaling. Okay. They just repackaged it because it's going out of style. It's a terrible market to be a wholesaler right now because it is, it is no longer a seller's market. It's now a buyer's market. So when you're wholesaling, you have to get a property under contract for a lower price than what you can then sell it for. Because what happens is you get it under contract for a hundred thousand, you sell it for a hundred and fifteen thousand, thus or to, to a buyer. So you're not using any of your own money, and you make that fifteen thousand in between. It's pretty much like being a realtor, but you don't need a license in most states to do that. But it's extraordinarily difficult right now to be a wholesaler because the houses are staying on the market longer. Prices are being lowered each day for houses that have been on the market. So for you to come in and then get that pro house under contract for a much lower number and then sell it at a higher price, it's it's really difficult right now. And wholesaling, to be honest with you guys, it's the it's preschool. It's preschool. We're in the pros here. This is the pros. Now, there are people out there that are still wholesaling, obviously, and you can make some quick money off of it. Uh, me and Naomi, uh, my student down in Atlanta that's a realtor, we did a subject to wholesale and, and she did an interview on my YouTube channel. She made 18,000. Well, we, she, there was an $18,600 assignment and we split that deal. We joint ventured on that. So it was 9,000 a piece real quick, 9,300 a piece real quick, but it was more sophisticated than just a traditional wholesale. Okay. So if you're a wholesaler, you need to learn creative financing and subject to that will open up your game, man. And you will love this because wholesaling is super difficult. You're just calling people, ask them if they want to sell their house, man. And they're just hanging up on you, hanging up. It's almost like playing a lotto. Really, unless you're really, really good at it, <laughs> like really, really good. So hope that helped. Fifth and last question. Mm. So the Trillist Painter yet from TikTok says, if I don't have the money to pay off the pre-existing mortgage, then how can I get a property? Good question. Great question. Don't forget, guys, hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, I want you guys to consider subscribing too if you feel like I bring you some value. I'm on here answering questions from some of my 700,000 followers, all right? And I want you guys to know this. I had a, I just had a Zoom call today, all right?
with uh with somebody and and he was like man dude i met he's like i met you last year um when you had three thousand followers and he's like you got seven hundred thousand followers now man like you you're the man dude like like you're the man when i talk because he's a high level dude and he talked and there's so there's people in my city that want me to teach them how to um scale their business uh, um on social media, right? Digitally. And, and I have to say this, I have to say that cause I don't do things for money. So I could give, I could give a shit less about the money to be honest with you. Cause it, to me, it ain't enough. They about to, they want to pay me 15,000 to teach them. And right now that's not enough. <laughs> it ain't, it's about my time for real. But I brought that up to say this, when I first started this, uh, man, when I told some people about it, they stopped answering my calls. They thought I was nuts. They thought I might be doing something illegal. I mean, you name it, right? You name it. And so, and so I didn't have much support. I didn't have much support, if any. What I had was actually a, a, a discouragement, not encouragement. And that's because, guys, a person can tell you anything, but they'll show you everything. Right. So I had to show people with my actions, but I also understood that the same the same gust of wind that 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 will put a put out a candle is the same gust of wind that feeds a forest fire. I don't know if y'all heard me. I'm gonna rewind that real quick for you. I said the same gust of wind that will extinguish a candle that will put it out, that will put that flame out is the same gust of wind that will that will fuel a forest fire and what that means to me is that once we make the decision man once we decide that we are going to do something different that we want our life to be different that we are disgusted with whatever it was before so we're going to do anything and everything that we have to do to make sure that we don't go back to that well that's when that gust of wind fuels the fire so the problem is is that we feel like our appointing, right? Our appointing should be when we think it should be right away. When we decide we're going to do something, we're going to we're going to pursue a new opportunity. We feel like that we should just get it. Boom. Like it's right there. But but we've got to understand that 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 our appointing that that almost never comes after our anointing. OK, it almost never comes after our anointing. And we have to go through a season of disappointing we have to go through a season of disappointing because that's what makes us strong enough to 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 stay there when we get there so we have to go through that season of disappointing man we have to so i said all that because this question kind of brought up some memories man when i first started this i was like okay i can buy a house by taking over an existing mortgage but I don't have the money to pay an extra mortgage. I started with $1,700, literally, man. People don't believe that now because I, I, I guess, I don't know if it looks glamorous over here, which it should. I got a little money to play with, you know, but I went through hell, literal hell. And so when I first found it, I'm like, well, damn, I can buy a house by taking over the existing mortgage. I don't have to qualify for it. I don't have to apply for it. But how am I going to make that mortgage payment though? Because I, I don't got no money. I damn near could barely pay my own mortgage. And, and, but, but I told myself this, I said, no matter how I'm going to pay it, doesn't even matter. It's still easier for me to acquire a house by just having to make the, continue to make the mortgage payments than it is for me to go out and acquire a house and get the 200,000 that the house costs or the 180,000 that it costs. It's much more difficult to go get that 180,000 than it is to pay $1,800 a month on a mortgage. So I'm going to continue to, to pursue this and study it. And that's when it dawned on me. That's when it clicked. I'm not paying that mortgage. I'm going to get it under contract and I'm going to give myself enough time from the day I get it under contract to the day I have to close. I recommend at least 30 days. That way, once you get it under contract, you begin to advertise that home. You begin to market that house that you have under contract as for sale by owner, rent to own, no credit checks, down payment required. So now when you find your buyer, you get a down payment from them. Now, if you got that house for no money down, well, you get to put all of that down payment in your pocket. But maybe you've got to pay the seller out an equity payment. Will you use the money from your down payment to pay your seller the chunk? 
you get to put the rest in your pocket. And then your buyer is giving you monthly rent to own payments. So once you get that rent to own payment from your buyer, you take the mortgage amount out of that, you pay the lender directly, and you get to keep the rest. Boom. Thus, becoming the bank and buying an investment property or a house to live in with no money out of your own pocket and no credit checks. Voila. I just gave you the sauce. So I hope that helped. I hope that helped. All right. Let me answer a couple of questions here. See what you guys got. Look at Lavanya. What's good? Okay. Okay. Ike, Ike is a witness. <laughs> Ike been there from the beginning. Ike, me and Ike had a conversation because me and Ike worked on, on, on getting, making our, having our city uh, get body cameras, our police finally. And Ike asked me to help him in the uh, uh, NAACP because he was the chapter president here in our city. And Ike, I know you remember this conversation, my brother. Ike, Ike said, man, you be great, man. I need some help too, you know. He said, you wouldn't have to work, you know, for the NAACP, but you know, I, I, I sure could use some help. I said, Ike, my brother, while I appreciate the, the, the gesture, uh, thank you very much. It's very humbling, but I plan to be rich. I plan to be rich because we have, I felt, and this is just my opinion, we have more influence when we have some money and some assets. And so I told Ike that, and I didn't even know about this strategy. I didn't know about it, but I had already decided in my mind, and I knew it was going to be in real estate too. That's the whole thing. So, so once you decide something, if you're willing to do whatever, Ever it takes and understand that your life begins at the end of your comfort zone, then there's not anything that you can't achieve. Nothing, man. You can do anything, guys. Anything. So, so you know, and 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 see, oh, I ain't gonna get into all that. Let me answer some questions because I get to going and let me see here. I, I see a long question here. Karen Jolie says, I'm caring for my elderly mom in Southern New Hampshire. I'm renting a house that's in probate. Also, there's tons of real estate properties around me. I'm on disability. So how can I do this? Well, you can do it kind of how I just explained, right? Where, where, you know, you can buy that house that you're living in right now. That's in probate. Because once you buy it, you're going to be buying it on owner financing. So that means that whoever you're buying it from, they'll no longer be responsible for maintenance, repairs. You're not buying it outright for whatever the whole cost is. So they'll save money on capital gains, taxes, everything. You're just buying it on terms. So you just start make you you would agree to a price, to an amount. And then let's just, I'm going to say for an example here, uh, Karen, that your monthly rent is uh, $600 a month and the, and the house is 100000 so you just let them know, you know, yes, I'll give you the hundred thousand, but I'm going to continue to pay that, pay you that hundred thousand at $600 a month for this amount of months. And then voila, you got, you got to have the right paperwork. And then again, like I said, um, you find, you find problems. We buy, we don't buy houses, we buy problems. And then if you can market that right and find the right buyer, you can buy these houses again without any money out of your own pocket and no credit checks. And I started this with $1,700. So I might as well been on disability shit. I, my pockets was on disability. <laughs> Ain't no doubt about that. So I hope that helped. Let's see here. Questions. Que oh, okay. So Jim Topaz says, would you suggest bandit signs? So I'm not a big fan of bandit signs personally, but you can use them. You just want to make sure you have the right right stuff on there so that you'll get the calls that you're looking for. And remember, you want to target your your uh, um you want to target your ideal client. So who does your product or service help? What is their problem and what is their goal? That's what you're answering to yourself and that's going to dictate what you're putting on those bandit signs so that you attract the right type of person. Because when we don't have a lot of money to start off with, we have to be more effective with less resources. And that's just the name of the game. That's just the way of the world. So unless you have a lot of money to burn, and I don't like burning money now, and I'm not cheap. I promise I'm not cheap. But I don't like to spend my own money. <laughs> you know, that's just me. So Guys, I appreciate y'all, man. I do love y'all. And um, I hope that the game that I gave you tonight was, was helpful to you. Um, 
Oh, before I forget, too, Ope Ileana said that disc was serious. Yeah, that disc goes hard for sure, for sure. So before I forget, guys, um, the up the the Become the Bank Challenge is March 27th through the 31st, all right? So it starts Monday, March 27th. There's a limited amount of seats available for the Become the Bank Challenge, and the Become the Bank Challenge is life-changing. It is. So if you do want to register for that, there's a link in the description of this video, and um, 2023 is our year. You want to get out of the rat race. You want to get control of your life. That's what learning creative financing and subject to in real estate will do. It will. And if you've ever thought to yourself that you wanted to get into real estate, I'm trying to tell y'all this is the way. This is the way. I mean, you don't need credit checks. You don't need good credit. And a lot of times you don't need lump sums of money out of your own pocket. How? What other way can there be? I'll never go to a bank and borrow money to buy an investment property. Never. It just ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Ooh, Lavanya. Lavanya, I want you to come back. Lavanya was at my, uh, my first challenge. Lavanya, I tell you this now, because you know me, I'm trying to get better and better every damn day. So um, come on back, Lavanya. Come on back. We go so hard. And then I put in a bonus day too, Lavanya. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. We go hard, Lavanya. Mm. I want you to get a house too, Lavanya. Now, shit. Excuse my language. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I've been trying not to curse as much, but we live in a vulgar world. So, okay, Carlos, I can't wait either, brother. Man, it's on. It's on. I like this group goes hard too. You guys got a lot of your uh, live introductions up already, man. I've never had this many up before this this soon or this far out from when the challenge is going to start, man. So this is going to be awesome. Damn, Jim. I appreciate that. I really do. You know, this is the thing about me. Um, This is the thing about me. I, I really, I really, truly, honestly, I don't do things for money. Now, I'm not saying that I'm like out here, I can survive with no money and all this stuff. No, it's not that. I just, I don't do things like for money. Like, oh, I, I'm going to make this money. I'm going to do this. Cause, no, I don't do it for money. Money is the side effect of things that I do and the value that I can bring to another human being, another individual. So if I can bring the value to their situation, the natural side effect of that is going to be beneficial for me and my family. And so I, I really, truly look to uplift those around me. And, and I just do that you know, one with the knowledge that I have about real estate, creative financing and subject to. But secondly, I do that by just telling my story and being honest and vulnerable, uh, vulnerable about it. I mean, if there's things in there that are embarrassing or whatever, I don't it, I don't care. Like, you know, if a person's out there judging me or whatever. So. Really, I don't do I don't live my life for for the acceptance of others. We can't do that. So that's why I'm just, I'm honest with you guys, man. I, I'm, I'm open with you guys about what I've went through, my situation, what I've overcome and what has helped me to do that because we're all going through something. So, so we can get over it too. So I appreciate it, uh, um, Jim. I really do. So let me see here. <laughs> Bob says, I like what you preaching. Bob, now you get to coming around here enough. You're going to be like, is he a preacher or a real estate investor? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, Bob. I do. So, okay, we got shaped in the house. We got we got shaped in the house. What's up? Shaped is my uh my deal administrator and transaction coordinator. She's out of Houston. Houston takeover, Texas takeover. Here we come. So I'm flying, I'm going to Houston with my family the week after the challenge. So the challenge is the 27th through the 31st. That's a Friday. And then that upcoming week, we go into Texas. I'm looking to get my house. I've been putting this out here, too. So any realtors in Houston, if you can find me a five bedroom, a four or five bedroom, three bathroom, three and a half bathroom with a pool, an in-ground pool and a hot tub in the backyard <laughs> with a seller that's willing to, to discuss owner financing and you refer them to me and I, I end up getting that under contract, um, I will let you into my inner circle for free on top of your commission, on top of your commission. So any realtors in Houston, if you know, if you see properties that have been on the market 60 days or longer, 90 days or longer, and they're, they're nice in the woodlands or in Cyprus, bring it to your boy. I'm going to pay you your commission. Okay. And then I'm going to let you into my inner circle and show you how to 10 X your real estate abilities in your market. 
you're going to be the man or the woman. <laughs> okay? So, Houston, here we come. His energy is raw. I like that about him. Yes, let's go. Well, thank you, Miss Mo. I appreciate that. I do. I do. Daniela, excited for the Become a Bank Challenge and to be part of your inner circle. Okay, okay. I'm excited, too. Yeah, I'm super excited. i seen there's a couple new videos up today uh, uh, as well. Um, yes, comes back at you. Yes, it does. It does. Um, so I seen there's a couple new videos up today too in the, uh, in the challenge. So I'm super excited about that. I'm going to take this last uh, question and then I got to get up out of here. So what do you think about tax deeds? I rock style says, so I'll say this. I don't like the typical way that tax deeds are done where it's delinquent tax deeds and you go to the auction and you buy that delinquent tax deed and then you wait whatever the redemption period is and then you just take that person's house from up, up under them. I do, I do not like it. I don't. I don't. But there is a better way. There's a better way. We just got to think about trying to help a person instead of trying to beat them. So, so with a tax deed, we look up those, those delinquent tax auctions and then we skip trace that person and we get to them before the auction date. Because obviously they can't pay their back taxes. So if we can tell them how we can help them solve their problem and put a little bit of money in their pocket, we can get it under contract. And then when we sell it, we get enough of a down payment to do what? To pay those back taxes. I've seen houses, man, that sold for eight thousand, twenty thousand that were worth hundreds of thousands. I looked one up with a student in Austin, Texas. The delinquent taxes were like twenty thousand dollars. The house was valued at one hundred and eighty thousand. So all we do is get it under contract before the actual auction date. And then we find our tenant buyer or our investor buyer that's going to give us a down payment and then pay us monthly payments. We just make sure that down payment is big enough to do what? To pay the back taxes. Y'all see where my energy is going with this? Are y'all feeling that vibe? I hope so, man. Do you guys want to be a part of the go-getter family? That's the question. I mean, is this not exciting? To me, this is the most exciting freaking thing that was ever invented. It's changed everything, man. Everything, dude. Mm. Oh, my God, man. I'm telling you guys, dude, like it has literally changed everything, everything. So that's why I put it out here for you guys, because we have a right to know about this suppressed knowledge. And I was lucky enough to find it. I was lucky enough to know what I had found and to give everything, everything to uh, be an expert. And to utilize it and, and for it to impact others' lives and in turn impact me and my families. And that's absolutely what it has done. So, hey, y'all, hey, you know what it is, guys. I love y'all, man. Um, I appreciate y'all. And until until next time, let's get to it, y'all. Guys, I've been looking for something. Uh, I came across um, the Go-Getter family, just in, you know, just looking for something else and just seeing different things going on. Uh, I started to see nothing but real estate videos online, on YouTube, TV, I mean, everywhere. It was crazy. And one of the first people I saw was Gene. And uh, there's that saying, you know, real recognizes real. Gene popped up and on, my, uh, on my For You page and started uh listening to him on his live and uh how he was talking about numbers about uh foreclosure homes and putting a down payment and you know uh the monthly payments and it all made sense to me you know it's just i i, I need just like a mentor to show me how to do it the go-getter family speaks to the problem and finds a solution to the problem i get more confident that this is a place where i can learn and grow and that they're not just going to take my money and then um leave me out to dry, leave me hanging, like. Like he stresses, like we're here to help people solve problems. And I don't know many businesses, even outside of real estate, where they actually focus on helping people. Most people, they're just trying to get the money. So I, that's one of the things that I love about uh, what Gene said uh, and, and, and how we actually um, operate um, doing this, this part of the business. I will be helping people save their um, their credit, um, help people who feel like they have no option, um, help them 
see their options, go over their options, and you know, make sure that they're able to um, survive and not just be another number um, or just be somebody that somebody else can just take something from. I'm blessed by this opportunity, uh, this this five day challenge, because I, as I, I hear the nuggets and the, the, the information being dropped. So I decided, hey, you know what? It is time to become a bank. So I'm looking to add more things to my knowledge, more tools, and learn just learning more and being more. So, but this year I decided I was going to redirect that energy and focus on myself, and instead, you know, bet on myself. So when Gene said in one of his videos I was watching to bet on yourself, I was like, bet. Just provide a financial freedom for me, my family and uh, get to a point where we don't have to struggle for the bills, pay bills, you know what I mean? Thanks for having me and I look forward to whatever it is we got planned for this coming up five days. I'm ready, let's go.